Hello. What can I plant into the garden now that the risk of frost is past? I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. The point at which your garden can be considered frost free will change depending on where you live. And the further south you are, the earlier that date is likely to be. And the further north, the later it's going to be. Here in West Wales, the guidelines say somewhere between the end of April and the middle of May. But I know from experience, we still get frost as late as the middle of June. Just a quick look through the garden uh, tells me that the seasons are changing. The brassicas that we grew for late winter and early spring uh, are going to seed, producing an array of wonderful yellow flowers, which uh, the bees and other pollinators are absolutely loving. But at the same time, uh, spring flowers have now come up. Things like lupins and geums, aquilegias, hardy geraniums and tons and tons of forget-me-nots. A week or so ago, I constructed this support for peas. So I've done it by putting three uh, stakes into the ground. And these are tree stakes uh, because I happen to have them. And they're about uh, three centimetres square. So that's one, one and a quarter inches square. And I've just used a mallet uh, to put those into the ground. And then across the top, I've taken two bamboo canes, joined them together in the middle uh, and then cable tied them on uh, right across the full length. Uh, and then onto the end of the canes, uh, I have put some tennis balls. I've cut a small cross in the end of the tennis ball uh, and pushed that on. It doesn't look very attractive now. This colour will fade over the summer, but it will protect my eyes uh, from the ends of the bamboo canes. And then over that, uh, I have draped a jute string trellis. Now you can use jute string, you could just use strings. Uh, uh, you can use a, a plastic um, trellis as well. Um, and what's actually growing in here is peas. So if I'd wanted to, I could have just used pea sticks. So lots of twisty sticks. But I know this pea variety is quite tall. It gets to about uh, four to five feet. So that's 120 to 150 centimetres. Uh, so if it does get to 150, they're going to be here somewhere. Um, but hopefully this will be enough support for them. After an incredibly wet April, it's been quite dry in May. So I gave this bed a really good soaking and then uh, put on a mulch about um, two inches, five centimetres thick with um, a soil conditioner. This is one that I've bought from uh, the local municipal uh, garden waste people. Uh, and now I've planted in my little pea plants and hopefully uh, over the next couple of months they will scramble up, they'll use this trellis as a support and I'll have fairly easy access to harvest the peas. Many variety of peas are hardy and will grow slowly throughout uh, the winter. Um, but I've been really <laughs> nurturing these peas. I didn't want to lose the seeds because I only had one packet of them. Uh, it's a variety that produces a pink flower. and I think they're really pretty and I think they're worth growing, even if I wasn't going to be able to harvest the peas from them. And this is our climbing bean support uh, for the year. Uh, it looks a bit wonky because it probably is, um, but that's because we don't have expert <laughs> fence post banging in skills but they're good enough and that's good enough for me. So there are three posts, so one at each end and one in the middle and then I've used uh, a piece of two by four screwed onto it here. It goes on the outside here, the inside here and on the outside again there and that was done by design. So we put in the two end posts first in a little bit and this one on the very edge of the bed uh, which means that this wood is kind of supported in every direction and it feels pretty solid. And then the canes go in at an angle so they lean uh, towards the path a bit, which means that once the beans grow up and mature, they'll hang down this side of the canes uh, and be very easy to reach as I walk along the path. These beans were sown the 28th of April, which is probably the latest that I've ever sown beans. And I'm really pleased I waited until that late. They've come up really strongly. I've been able to harden them off. And here we are a month later uh, and they're now in the ground. 
These ones are Belossi beans and at that end I've got some French climbing beans called Necker Gold. I'm very excited. I haven't grown Belossi beans for a few years. I decided I don't like them frozen, I only like fresh ones. So I haven't planted masses of plants, I think there might be 20 here. Uh, which now I'm saying it actually sounds like quite a lot but we're going to enjoy these fresh and any spares that we have uh, we'll be giving to our neighbours. I've noticed that a couple of the leaves ha have been visited by a slug or a snail but apart from those leaves it doesn't look like there's too much damage here. I do really like it as we do this seasonal change. In fact I like it so much I've written a book. It's called The Seasoned Gardener and well rather than me telling you about it Here's Nile from Nile Gardens. So this is what I think Liz is really good at, uh, both in Grounded and particularly in The Seasoned Gardener, is that this book, you, when you get it, you can sit and spend a couple of hours, a couple of days, just reading it from cover to cover like a book, because it is, it's autobiographical, it's chronological, it starts in the autumn and it goes all the way through the year. That's really nice. But then at the same time, you know Liz, you know her channel, she's really good for like hints and tips and things like that because let's face it, she has a proper lifetime of experience so there's something really nice about the fact that she's sharing her knowledge in this as well so it means that you might remember, oh yeah, she had a really good tip on and you'll go back to the book. That's what I love about it, it's a little bit of both. You get a bit of her, you get a bit of by their farm and what you get is a load of time that she has spent through the year I really love that. The Seasoned Gardener is available from my website, bythefarm.com. Uh, it's also available on Amazon and other online retailers and also at all good bookstores. As a complete aside, <laughs> this is a parsnip uh, that was grown last year and is now going to flower. It produces these lovely flat heads of yellow flowers which uh, pollinators love. But more than anything, I noticed in our previous home, whenever parsnips went to seed like this, they would always be covered with ladybird larvae, which was great because that meant the ladybirds, the predators had arrived and they were going to deal with any aphids that were in the garden. I've let this parsnip grow uh, and flower because I want to collect the seeds so that I've got super fresh seeds for next year. And here in this corner of the garden, I've got some runner beans. And uh, these were also planted on the 28th of April, and it's now the 25th of May. They have uh, filled these little pots uh, with roots, and they really are ready to go out into the garden. Now, I'm not putting those uh, in this veg garden, but under my rose arch, where I also grew them last year, uh, this is a variety called Greek Gigantes. I don't need to be picking these uh, on a regular basis. They will stay on the plants uh, until the autumn and I will gather all the seed pods at the same time. So these just need a, a jolly good soak and for me to plant them out. In the polytunnel uh, overnight, these lovely squash plants are also ready for me to uh, find a new home for them. I have really helpfully uh, labelled the pots. This is so unlike me. Uh, so <laughs> I'm so happy to have labelled them. <laughs> I'd forgotten I'd done this. So uh, this is an uh, Uchiki Kiri squash, uh, a small, uh, small orange, an orange uh, winter squash. Love the taste of those, but these are also really highly decorative plants. So I think I might make a tripod or a structure with four or five canes and grow those vertically uh, in the veg garden. And then I've got other squashes that I'll be growing uh, on the outer edges of the garden so they can scramble away without getting in the way of too many of the paths. It really is worth hardening plants off properly and that's the process of bringing them outside during the day, letting them have fresh air uh, blow around them and some sunshine and then uh, taking them back into somewhere more sheltered in the evening and then when you've done that for about a week uh, you can then leave them outside in a sheltered spot uh, overnight for a few days before you then transplant them. 
this year, because I've sown everything quite late, the whole growing, hardening off and transplanting out process feels much more condensed and actually it feels much better. So I think even though uh, everything got delayed this year because I had COVID um, earlier in the spring, it's actually been really good and I'll be doing this later sowing again in future years. I've planted out my small courgette plants and I've made a sort of almost a well, a small wall around the courgette um, on the lower side of the hill. Uh, we are gardening on a slope here so if you're in a flat space you can uh, make this little wall uh, all around your plants. So there we go, uh, that will make sure that uh, when I water it the water will stay in this area and go straight down to the roots. Uh, just one tip for planting out your courgette plants, uh, whichever direction the first true leaf grows, uh, the opposite direction is the direction that your plant is likely to trail in. Now I didn't think this was a particularly trailing variety but already <laughs> it looks like it's very definitely going in this direction. Well it turned out to be an absolutely glorious day but it was so hot I felt it was not suitable for planting out um, plants because they were just going to dry out in the sun and uh, in the breeze and it is really important to make sure that when you're planting your new plants into the ground that you give them a really good drink and you also need to make sure that you're not going to put them out in the real heat of the day when just that much heat is going to give them a lot of stress. What about stress? You don't like stress do you? My little very laid-back cat. Yes, come on then, here you go. And if you want to see how we're getting on elsewhere in the garden, I'll leave a link on the screen uh, to our most recent forest garden tour. And if you click on that, it'll take you straight through to that video.